Hey, praise the Lord. This is Brother Clinton. Welcome to the Word Prophet channel once again. I have something that I need to share with you all, which is of the utmost importance. And, of course, this message is directed to those that are in the Church of Jesus Christ, but I fully recognize that YouTube is a public network, so there are many of you watching this who are not a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. Nevertheless, you may be able to contribute something to this issue, and um, it's also possible that hearing this message you will turn to God and fear Him and, and, and turn to Him with all of your heart and be saved. And if that's the case, praise the Lord. That said, I want to let you know that the Word Prophet channel is here to preach the Word of God to you. This is not a sensationalist channel. Uh, like there are many channels out there on YouTube that people are sensationalists, and because of that they have you know 100,000 subscribers, 200,000 subscribers, because they entertain people. Um, and that's not what I'm into. I preach the Word of God. But this is something that is, of course, related to the Word of God and is something so profound in its diabolical nature that, and I've just discovered it today, okay, I'm far from an expert on this, I'm sharing with you what I have just learned in the last few hours, and it is very profound and very shocking. There are some people, um, evidently, in the world that know about this because I found some information about it on the web, on the internet, but I'm going to share with you what I've learned so far, and what I would like is for those of you who are Christians to take heed and to pray about this with me, not only for this man who wrote to me, uh, that he may be healed, but also for many others out there who have been affected by this terrible man-made plague which has been sent by the enemy to destroy the sons of men. Let me share with you part of this letter. I don't have this man's permission to speak his name, so let's call him Bob. Okay, He says, I'm, this isn't the first letter he wrote me. He wrote me, and then I wrote him back and asked him a couple of questions, and then he wrote me back again. And this is a portion of his last letter explaining his situation. He says, I am not a biologist either, but I do suffer from a disease known by those doctors that recognize it as a legitimate physical affliction as Morgellons disease. And you'll understand why he phrased it that way in a few moments. It is a fungal infection that attacks almost all functions in the human body. I anticipate that you will be looking into this disease during our correspondence. Well, you anticipated correctly. It is paramount to search far and wide for a variety of information, as there's many doctors who still call this delusional parasitosis. Okay, and we'll, we'll discover that also in a few minutes here. Delusional parasitosis. Those doctors that get the affliction, however, soon change their mind. Well, in fact, let's look at that right now. Delusional parasitosis. Here it is right here. I looked it up in Wikipedia. Uh, this is Morgians. And let us remember that Wikipedia is not an authoritative source on truth. It is a public network where anybody can submit their information to be used by other people. Okay, So we have to understand that when we read anything on Wikipedia. It's just like YouTube. Is whatever we read in Wikipedia is somebody's opinion. All right. Now let's read Morgan's, also called Morgan's disease or Morgan's syndrome, is a condition which people have in, in which people have the delusional belief that they are infested with disease-causing agents described as things like insects, parasites, hairs, or fibers, while in reality no such things are present, or are present only through benign causes, such as a piece of thread falling onto the skin. Okay, this is why this is where the term uh, delusional parasitosis came from. Okay, doctors have been trained just like the doctors in Japan have been trained when the people in Japan come to them with the diseases that they've inherited from the radioactive poison that's been spread throughout their whole country. The doctors have been trained to tell the people that it's not from radiation; it's from something else. Okay, and of course the people don't know any better. If they did, they wouldn't have to go to a doctor. They go to a doctor because they don't know what the problem is, and the doctor's job is to take care of the person to diagnose the disease correctly and unfortunately most doctors are owned by the government and do whatever the government tells them to do and so for that reason most people are told by their doctors that this condition is something that they like to call delusional parasitosis because doctors are trained not to tell people what this really is but he says the the, the brother who wrote says those doctors that get the affliction however soon change their mind indeed how convenient. This has been a huge debate for years, but the medical community finally seems to be waking up to this, which is truly a blessing, since many Morgan's victims have committed suicide due to the ridicule they are subjected to when seeking help. Due to the ridicule they are subjected to when seeking help. These people have this condition that has been afflicted and inflicted upon them purposely, and then when they go to seek help, 
The people who inflicted this upon them purposely have hired doctors to ridicule them and to tell them that it's all in their mind. And, of course, the pain they feel from the mental and physical debilitation. And this, of course, is before the festering sores break out and the parasites and fungi living within you emerge from your skin. This is when many people become suicidal because it becomes impossible to live a normal life with this disease. Not to mention the overwhelming fear of infecting someone else, perhaps a loved one. Scientists have studied the fungi and parasites, which, by the way, doesn't match anything that they have ever seen before. The fibers that protrude from the skin seem synthetic in nature, but yet behave as if alive. Seems like a cross between nylon and plant matter. A cross between nylon and plant matter. And they react to electromagnetism and radio frequency. Now to my point, which doesn't involve solving the mainstream doctor's mystery, if this is real or not. They have found that when this thing starts to grow within the body, it replicates itself by breaking down your cells and replacing it with a somewhat similar cell, only not quite. It's very interesting. This is the link that he gave me, and we'll, we'll go to that link in a moment, and I'll provide it for you in the bottom of the information box. This link explains a bit further... Note that you cannot get a full grasp on what Morgan's is by any one single article or study, but I feel this article is very relevant to this inquiry. This is fringe to say the least, but bear with me. The infection completely takes over the human body and turns you into something else entirely. Something not human. Something not human. This is measurable by the doctors. Now this sounds kind of far out if this is something that you've never heard of before, like me, who never heard of anything like this before today. But let me share some things with you. <clears throat> Morgans, this is the link that the, that the brother left in his, in his letter, this one right here, all right? Morgans, it says, it says, Morgans and Nano Machines by the CIDP Foundation. And everything that I'm showing you that will be linked in the bottom of this video in the information box. And I highly encourage you to read this material for yourself. There is now strong data indicating that this disorder is associated with nanotechnology, specifically nanomachines in the form of nanofibers. Now, when I read this, when I got to this word right here, nanofibers, something clicked in my mind. And I remembered that not too long ago I had heard on YouTube, well, I should say not too long ago, maybe a year or two ago, maybe even more, I had heard about a particular phenomenon in chemtrails whereby people were finding not only traces of, of chemicals like barium and aluminum and, 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 and mercury and other things like that in the air and in the water, but also people were finding in certain areas fibers on the ground, fibrous material covering their cars, covering the, the ground, covering themselves. And I remembered this. And I did a search for it on YouTube, and I found this. This is a video called Proof, Morgion's Fiber in Chemtrail. Now, I kind of that was an eye-opener for me because I had never put those two things together before, but evidently this person has, and this video was uploaded in 2010. Okay, this video, and I'll show you a couple seconds of it here, Okay, but I don't want to uh, get a copyright strike by putting someone else's video on my channel. So I'm going to put a link to this video below also. And it's only four minutes long. I suggest that you watch it. And if you're interested in subscribing to this channel, go ahead and do so. Um, but this describes the process whereby this person found one of these fibers and took a microscope and actually examined it and did some experimentation with it. And you'll be amazed at the things that came forth from it. And that's the reason, evidently, why people were finding those fibers that were dropped to the ground from chemtrails that came out of the back of airplanes. They were not contrails. They were chemtrails. That's the first thing that I thought of as soon as I got to this word right here. There is now strong data indicating that this disorder is associated with nanotechnology, specifically nanomachines in the form of nanofibers. The National Science Foundation defines nanofibers as having at least one dimension of 100 nanometers or less. 
Fiber samples taken from the skin of a Morgan's sufferer when exposed to heat did not burn until it heated to 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not something biological. As well, under examination with an electron microscope, fiber samples appear not to be organic. They have no eukaryotic, pardon me for butchering that, eukaryotic cells, no cell membrane, meaning that Morgion's is not a parasite. It is not biological. It is a machine. Wrap your head around that. In March and April 2007, Jeff Rentz published and, and broadcast some capable research based on scientific techniques including electron micros microscopy, energy dispersive spectroscopy, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, and Fourier transform Raymond spectroscopy. And yay, praise God I pronounced all those correctly, I think, but I have no idea what they are. Possibly you do. The team leader of the research unit was Dr. Hildegard Staninger of the Integrative Health International at Lakewood, California. The preliminary findings were disturbing. Morgan's appears to be a communicable nanotechnology invasion of human tissue in the form of self-assembling, self-replicating nanotubes, nanowires, and nanoarrays with sensors. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, this is the stuff that science fiction was made of 50, 70, 100 years ago. And this is a fact. This is a scientific fact that these things are happening in our world today. That somebody has equipped aircraft with dispersing machines, dispersion machines, to disperse these little machines enveloped in some sort of other material over the population so that people would inhale them or people would ingest them by through their skin or in the water and so that these Look at what it says it is. It appears to be a communicable nanotechnology invasion of human tissue in the form of self-assembling, self-replicating nanotubes, nanowires, and nanoarrays with sensors. These are intelligent machines that have been purposely introduced into the, system, the biological systems of human beings in order to defile their systems, in order to replicate themselves inside of a human being, destroying the human cells and replacing them with, with inferior copies that are artificial. Is this out of a science fiction movie or is this actually happening? I marvel at this. Let's move on a little bit. Other nano configurations associated with Morgion's disease carry genetically altered and spliced DNA or RNA. The nanomachines which precipitate morgions thrive in an alkaline pH thrive in alkaline pH conditions and use the body's bioelectric energy and other unidentified elements for power. There is evidence listen to this. There is evidence that certain of the tiny machines possess their own internal batteries as well. The morgions nanomachines are configured to receive specific tuned microwave EMF and ELF signals and radio data. What does that make you think of? Perhaps these? For years, many years, we have seen these abominable towers in our neighborhoods. All of us have seen them. Look, here's even one that's disguised as a palm tree, and I've seen those in Scottsdale as well because I lived in Phoenix. And for years I have known that these were for much more than cell phone communications. And in the beginning, even though I knew that, I didn't know exactly what they were for. And I seem to learn more about them all the time as the Lord reveals it. But, you know, a while back I made a video called Mind Control Technology, and I talked about something called Psychotronics. This is a video on my channel called Mind Control Technology. And I talked about something called psychotronics, which was first mentioned to me by a customer in my taxi a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. I'm not sure exactly how many years ago it was. Um, the man's name was Tim, and he said that he would communicate with me later on, uh, and we exchanged email addresses, and he, well, actually, we didn't, I gave him my email address, 
and I was hoping that he would email me, and he said that he would, and I never heard from him again. And I fear that because he was speaking about something that probably he shouldn't have been speaking about, giving out information that he probably shouldn't have been giving out because of his conscience wanting to warn people that possibly he was made to disappear. But psychotronics is the use of electronic equipment and, and, and radio frequencies to control a population. Okay, that's what psychotronics is. And that's what these are for. They may also be used for cell phone communication. They probably are. But that's not the main reason that they're there. The main reason that you might have a smartphone or an iPhone is not to communicate with your friends and get on Facebook and do all that stuff. The main reason that you have it is because your owners have talked you into buying one so that they can track you and control you. That's the reason that you have it. You see? So I made this video called Mind Control Technology. I talked about psychotronics. Now let's look at some of the effects of this disease, Morgion's disease. This is what it looks like when this affects a particular person. This is a close-up of it. Okay, I'll leave a, a link to this page as well. You can go through all these pictures and look at them. It's not a very pretty picture. Okay, I guess I should have warned people that there are graphic images in this video. but This is what happens when people have this disease. And as the brother said who wrote, most physicians are trained by the government when they see symptoms of this disease to tell people that it's not what it really seems to be and that it is a delusional belief. And they call it delusional parasitosis, which means that you're delusional when you think that you have parasites, but you really don't. But that's a deception. Now, when I heard about all this, and I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together, I thought about this particular verse of the scripture, which I've been asking the Lord about for a long time. It's in Daniel chapter 2, verse 43. And it says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Now I'm not saying that this particular verse is talking about this particular disease that we've been looking at. But I am wondering if it's a possibility. I've had people try to convince me that this particular verse of the scripture is talking about a hybrid mix between men and machines. And I have never received that theory because the scripture says very simply, they, I, I really don't care for that little color thing that shows up, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Okay. If it was an inanimate object that God was showing us that would be mingled with the seed of men, he wouldn't have worded it this way, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Whoever they is, is something that will, of, of their own volition, mingle themselves with the seed of men, not something that would be in the hand of another person. So I don't really think that that's what this is, but at the same time I wonder, could this be that or could this be something like that? But in conclusion, I want to leave you with this. It's the 91st Psalm, and I just want to say before we read this psalm that everything that I've shared with you in this video is the truth, and it's something that I didn't know existed, or something that I didn't put all the pieces together, uh, of the, I didn't put all the pieces of the puzzle together in my mind until just now. And my voice may sound very calm, but my heart is not. Because we are living in the last days, and Paul the Apostle called these perilous times, and Jesus and the other apostles called them perilous times as well, and the prophets of old. We are living in perilous times, and I know that there are many of us who don't know anything about perilous times because we live our nice little comfortable life, and we've never really suffered persecution. We've never really had people stone us uh, to the ground and, and beat us to the ground and hang us upside down and beat us with clubs and, and things like that because of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Not yet anyways. And um, we, in our comfortable lives, we, we have kind of a way of just assuming that as long as we just go to church on Sunday and, you know, give the tithe to the pastor, uh, everything's going to be okay. You know, and we'll just live this nice, comfortable life. And Jesus was the only one who had to suffer. We don't have to suffer. And we're just going to, you know, we're just going to have this nice, comfortable life. This this uh, balance beam testimony, as Francis, uh, Francis Chan spoke one time. I love that video. But, um... That's not how it is, boys and girls. And we are dealing with, not we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
And those spirits have soldiers that work for them, human people that work for them. Okay, we call them the global mafia. They call themselves the elite. All right. The Bible refers to them as and their actions as the mystery of iniquity in, in 2 Thessalonians 2 7. The mystery of iniquity doth already work. This is a global, um, how should I say this? It's a mafia ring, it's a crime ring of very rich, very powerful, very evil, wicked people who serve Satan and they are destroying the world on purpose so that they can, and, they, and they're pawns themselves, but they're doing this so that they can set the stage for the unclean spirits that are leading them so that when Lucifer, the man of sin, comes, he can have his pyramid to sit upon. And those are the people that are doing the terrible things that are happening in the world today. Those are the people that are spraying poison in your air. Those are the people that have been putting sodium fluoride in your water since you're, you were a child. Okay, sodium fluoride is poison. They know it's poison. All dentists know that it's poison. Okay, so if it's dentist recommended, that means the de dentists who recommended it are paid by the mafia to lie to you and tell you that it's good for your teeth when they know that it's poison. It rots your teeth, it rots your brain, it rots your whole body, and it makes you stupid, and it makes you easier to overcome. That's the reason that there's been fluoride in your water. That's the reason that they've been spraying chemtrails in the air. That's the reason why they've allowed wicked companies like Monsanto to take over the food supply and, and remove the, the nutrients from your food and give you genetically modified garbage in the process in order to weaken you. And these are the same people that have put this, this, these little nanomachines in these fibers, in this fibrous material, and sprayed them over populations knowingly, knowing that when the people were exposed to this, that it would destroy them. But I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ right now in conclusion in this video, that if you are a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, you can and will overcome this whether you have been affected by it in the past or not. And this is including the brother that wrote to me. Okay, Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven and earth. He is the almighty God. And he has power to create. He had power to create the heavens and the earth. He had power to, to move the ocean for his people. He, he opened the Red Sea for his people Israel so that they could walk through on dry land. And right when they got to the other side, guess what? They turned around and Egypt was following them, the army of Egypt. And God took that same sea and he threw it right on top of them and overturned all their chariots and drowned them all with that same sea. That's the same Jesus Christ that we serve. Now let's look at what Psalm 91 says. And this is a psalm that was written by Moses. And the more I read it, the more I know that it was not necessarily written for the things that the people of God were facing at that time. It was written specifically for the things that the people of God are facing in these days that we are living in right now. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. Listen, I will say of the Lord. This is a conscious decision that we are making. Okay, it's not we if we, we'll say it if we feel like it. It is a a military disciplinary decision. A disciple says this, I will say the Lord, just like a disciple wakes up in the morning and says, I will do my exercises today because I am training for the Olympics. I will get up and I will pray to the Lord and read the scripture before I deal with anybody. I will put on my armor before I go out into the street because I am a soldier. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. In him will I trust. Not men, not nations, not governments, not money, not wife, not children, not husband, not father, not mother. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. What is a noisome pestilence? You remember when the Philistines had, had captured the Ark of the Covenant? And they were so happy they had captured the Ark until all of a sudden they started to get emeralds in their secret parts, tumors in their secret parts, all of them. That's what a noisome pestilence is. It's a disease that is very painful, like the one that we just looked at right here. Okay, That's what it looks like. Look at this. That's a noisome pestilence. That's what a noisome pestilence is. Surely, surely, not maybe, surely, he shall deliver thee Okay, what does it mean that he shall deliver thee? Well, if you weren't in trouble, you wouldn't need deliverance, would you? 
if you're in trouble, then you need deliverance. And the Bible says, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Listen to this. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. When the devil tells you that God won't heal you anymore, you lift up your shield. When someone comes at you with a sword and you're on a battlefield, you lift up your shield, don't you? You lift up your shield to deflect the blow from that sword, from that arrow, from that dart. You lift up your shield, and the, and, and the shield that you have is God's truth. What is God's truth in this case? Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Listen, saints, those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ and serve him, you don't need to be afraid for the things that the global mafia is doing in this world. If you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, you're serving the Almighty God. He stood before his disciples and he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Guess what, boys and girls? That includes everything everywhere. There is no other power or authority outside of everything that he is Lord of in heaven and in earth. There is nothing outside of that realm. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. What is a pestilence? That noisome pestilence, what is it? It's a disease. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness shalt thou be afraid, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, brother, sister, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Remember for a moment, if you will, the things that happened in the nation of Egypt when God Almighty, the God of Abraham, brought his plagues, great and terrible, upon Pharaoh and upon all the people of Egypt. Let's remember what happened with the people of Israel who were living in Goshen, which was a city in Egypt at that time. When all the plagues that God sent came upon the Egyptians, the people in Goshen, the people of Israel that lived in Goshen, were untouched by any of those plagues. In all the houses of the people of Israel in Goshen, there was not one of their cattle that died. There was no hail. There were no lice. There were no plagues. There was no darkness. There was no death. Those things only took place upon the Egyptians. And they were living in the same country. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, they were living in the same country. They were living right next door to each other. And the plagues came upon the Egyptians and upon Pharaoh and not upon the people of Egypt and Goshen. And God, who did that at that time, is able to do it again. If you believe the word of God, then believe what I am telling you. Hallelujah. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Have you made the Lord your habitation? Do you live in him? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Look, look at that little dot at the end of the sentence. That's a period. That means that it's done. It's been said. There's nothing more to be added to this sentence, like the word if or the word but or a conditional phrase or anything like that. It's done. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under your feet. Now listen to this. Does this say the young lion and the dragon shall trample you under their feet? No, it says just the opposite, doesn't it? And who are the young lions? Well, if you look elsewhere in the scripture, you'll see that the young lions are the wicked people of this world who are young, strong men and trust in their strength, their physical strength and their riches instead of trusting in the living God. And their end is destruction. The young lion and the dragon, we know who the dragon is, the devil, that old serpent, Okay. So it says, The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Thou shalt trample them under your feet. Does that sound like you're going to die of a disease that's caused by them? No, that sounds to me like they are about to, to be destroyed and God is about to be glorified in you, brothers and sisters. Listen to this. Because he hath set his love upon me, 
Therefore will I deliver him. God says this. Because he hath set his love upon me. Who is he? The disciple that sets his love upon the living God. If you set your love upon the living God, then this he refers to you. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. Deliver him. Okay. Now, if you have set your love upon the living God and you belong to him, then you've already been delivered from the power of sin by the gospel of Christ. You're baptized in his name. You're filled with his spirit. You're delivered from the power of sin. You belong to him. And therefore, he will deliver you. He will deliver you from what? If you're already saved from sin, deliver you from what? Well, from the pitfalls that are, that, are, that are so prevalent in this world today. We live in perilous times. And there are terrible things that are happening in this world that we need to be delivered from from time to time. And among those things is sickness and disease. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. Do you know the name of the living God? The name of the living God is Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name given under heaven among men, whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the message. The name Jesus Christ means the one which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty, who has come in the flesh to save us. That's what his name means. And if you know his name, it means you have a revelation of his name, and you understand who he is. The Bible says, I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. Oh my goodness, this is awesome, isn't it? Why is it that God says he shall call upon me, and I will answer him? Because he is the living God. He's the living God. The God of the Catholics cannot answer them. The God of the Islamists cannot answer them. The God of the Buddhists and the Jehovah's Witnesses cannot answer them. The God of the Trinitarian Pentecostals can't answer them. Why can't, he, why can't they answer those people? Because those gods don't exist. They are nothing. They are nobody. But the Lord, the Almighty God, is the living God. He is the great and terrible God. The nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. He is the living God, and he is able to answer his people when we call upon him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This sounds like something that would be necessary in a time when there was troubles on the earth. Amen. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Deliver him. Deliver him. Deliver him. Do you need to be delivered? Well, guess what? God said, I will deliver him. God did not say that he would heal you in his time if it's his will. He has said, with his stripes, we are healed. It is his will. If you have the opportunity to go to the elders of the church, go. Call for the elders of the church and have them anoint you with oil, praying, you, praying over you in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Not might save the sick, shall save the sick. James 5 verses 14 and 15. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. God didn't say, pray to him and maybe he'll heal you, maybe he'll hear you. He said, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. How many times do you need God to tell you that he will deliver you if you believe on him, if you know his name, and if you trust in him? With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Brothers and sisters, the 91st Psalm was written by the hand of Moses, the servant of God. And it was written about times that Moses had never experienced and times that he didn't know anything about because he was a prophet. But the times that it was written about are the times that we are living in right now. Take courage, my brethren. Wait upon the Lord. Be patient and keep his way. And he will exalt thee to inherit the land. Time is almost up, boys and girls. Let's pray unto the Lord that he would give us the strength to preach the gospel with more urgency than ever before. Because the time is upon us that the kingdom of Antichrist is about to be established in the earth. And he shall be destroyed without hand. And the Lord Jesus Christ shall establish his kingdom in all the earth, even as it's written right here in Daniel 2.44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Amen and amen.